Hey, it's Buddy from Root and Earth, back again for a whole new year. It is March 5th, 2023, and I am heading out for my first morel forage of the year. Um, and that is because on the 1st, I was walking around in my backyard, which is where I am right now, and I have a small patch of morels that pop up here pretty regularly every year so I took a, a look around the other day because there were plants that are indicators that I had seen and as I was looking around I spotted this little cutie right here which is the first uh, tulip morel or uh, Morcella diminutiva that I have seen this year. March 1st is by far the earliest that I have ever found one, but uh, we've had a warm winter and had a really nice spell of over 10 days with low temperatures above 55 degrees, and that is usually what sets them off. So this little patch here in my backyard, I can um, pretty much rely on to tell me that they are beginning to be up, and once they're here, I will... Uh, go walk the local creek bottoms around my house and start to look for the bigger blonde morels. So I have a classic example of early season morel hunting today where I was walking and walking uh, a few miles, walking a creek bottom. All of the habitat looked excellent. Haven't seen a single thing since the tiny diminutiva in my backyard. I continued walking. I thought about turning around thinking that it might be too early and walked about another half mile and all of a sudden I spotted a few. And uh, as I started scanning the area carefully, I found that I indeed am not too early and uh, I'll give you a look around at what I'm seeing now. Something's already been munching on those. So I'm just completely surrounded by them now. I am going to collect these and uh, I'll be back if I find anything else. Another half mile or so and the Good fortune continues on. I am in uh, privet patches. There are tulip poplars in the area, but I don't know. I don't have any uh, data to confirm, but in my area, this particular creek bottom, it seems as if the Morcella Americanum are actually Being hosted by privet, this is an old privet that has broken off and split, and it has some dead wood and roots underneath. I don't know if they become saprobic when privet dies or what it is, but in these privet thickets, I tend to find my best hunting in areas like this, and uh, it is not pleasant to move through, but... Um, it's definitely where they seem to be in my section of Western North Carolina. I'll grab these and see if we can't find some more.
The hunt continues to be good. I am still off in thickets of privet that I more or less have no choice but to crawl through, but um, I'm in the floodplain of a creek. I'm about five or six feet above the normal flow of the creek, and poplar, um, there are some types of maple, although I don't think those are associates. Uh, <clears throat> poplar is the main tree down here, but mostly it's in these privet thickets that they're growing. And uh, have a look at this little patch. It's a nice one. It's a nice little cluster, which around here I don't see clusters all that often a few more hiding back in there so the first foray of the year Digging was it. amazing it was probably the best that I have personally experienced and now that I am back at home and sitting in my yard and have a little bit better light, I thought that we would go over the key identifying features of morels or uh, mushrooms in the Morchella genus. Um, so they grow in association with hardwoods and specifically here in North and South Carolina with tulip poplars. Um, also with some others like ash and hickory and sycamore and several others. I find them mostly in creek bottoms, in the floodplain, um, in amongst privet thickets, which are the understory of the poplars and what have you. Um, the identifying features... They have this stalk and cap, stipe and cap, stem and cap, whatever you prefer, um, a pitted cap that looks almost like honeycomb, which has had the honey taken out of it, pitted. It does not have folds or wrinkles. These are pits almost like, uh, well, like a wasp nest or honeycomb is the closest thing that I can think of. When they start out, they're small and they're gray. This is the same species, which people call blondes or yellow or white. Uh, we also have the diminutiva, which I did not collect today, but they are much smaller. But all of the morels share these key features, which are the pitted cap, this white stem. Um, if you cut them in half, they will be completely hollow in the middle. I like to cut them in half lengthwise which is the same way that I put them in the dehydrator, but you will see they're completely hollow, like a cup. They do not have any flesh or cottony or feathery tissue inside, which some of the lookalikes would have. Um, I have never found anything in the Carolinas that would be a lookalike, but I do know they exist. Um, and in the Midwest, they find them a lot more. But uh, yeah, growing mycorrhizal in association with tulip poplar, ash, hickory, um, sycamore. I have found them around white oaks. I don't know if they are an associate or not. Also sourwood. Um, I think that's about it in my specific area. Pitted cap, white stem. The cap and the stem are fused. There is no delineation other than the fact that the tissue type changes. So when you look at the bisected, uh, which I have here somewhere, when you look at the bisection, this inner tissue is just constant. There is no 
no change whatsoever where the cap meets the stem. Some of the lookalikes have tissue that folds over and there is a, a separation at the cap and stem, but the true morels, it's all just one, just a difference in the shape of the tissue as you go from stem to cap. They're really easy to identify. They're very rare and hard to find though, and so if you find them, you are doing well. And if my videos help you find them, that makes me feel good. Thank you for all the support on my channel that I've received. Um, a like, a subscription, a comment, all of these will really help my channel grow, and I appreciate it if you would leave some. I hope your baskets overflow. Thank you so much for watching.